Sorry? Alright, yeah. part two. Okay, so guys, at the moment we have 38. Now, I did 38 part one yesterday. I'm going to do 38 part two now. Now, 38 part two. It's awesome. Okay. Shh. Sorry, guys. This needs to be uh, calibrated. So, what we have here, guys, is a. Uh, excuse me. What we discussed yesterday was when you add two fractions together. So, for example, when you add 5 twelfths plus 3 tenths. We discussed yesterday that if you break up 12 into its prime numbers, what are the two prime numbers that multiply to give you 12? 3, 2 and 2. Would you agree with that? And what about, what about uh, 10? 3 and 5 and 2. Then you look at them, okay? And the two denominators compare themselves to each other. And they go, look, I have a 2, you have a 2. I need an extra 2. And this one will go, I need a 5. And then this one will, will say, I also need a 3. And then when you multiply out everything on top, everything on the bottom will then turn into what number, guys? On the bottom will be 60. So that's another way of getting a common denominator. Now remember, you only had, you added in 5 on top, on, on the bottom, so you need to add in 5 on the top. That makes it 25 over 60. You added in a 3 and a 2 on the bottom, which means you need to multiply 3 and 2 on the top. And that will give you 18. And then when you add them together, you get 43 all over 60. Is that okay? 43 all over 60. Now, we're going to use the same logic here. We're going to look at the two of these. Now, can any of the denominators be factorized? What about x squared minus 1? Can that be factorized? X plus 1, X minus 1. Everybody got that? X plus 1, X minus 1. Happy enough with that? Okay, guys. So, what we're going to have next is it's going to be 2X all over. Now, this one here is going to be X plus 1, X minus 1. The other one is going to be minus 1 all over X minus 1. Now guys, what, what happens when the denominators compare themselves to each other? What do you need to do? Anybody know? What, what? They both have that one, but they don't have the x plus 1 underneath. So I put an x plus 1 underneath, and if I put it underneath, what else must I do? Put it on top. Okay, and then what happens? So 2x and then multiply minus 1 by x and minus 1 by plus 1 and what do we get? Minus 1x minus 1 all over x minus 1 x plus 1. Now what happens next guys? So we're going to be left with x minus 1 on top and then x minus 1 x plus 1 on the bottom. And then what happens? X, plus, x minus 1 is cancelled and we're left with x plus 1 as the answer. Okay guys, which one do you want me to do next? I would have done, uh, which one did I do yesterday? Part 3 wasn't it? So I'll do part 4 now. So with part 4, uh, with part 4 what we're going to do is uh, what? Which one can be factorized in the bottom in this question? What denominator can be factorized, lads? Do you know what I mean by factorized? Take out a letter that's in common. Just look at the bottom. The A B plus B squared. What can be taken out there? B. B. And what's next? A plus B. What about the other one? A and A plus B. Now, 
Guys, what happens next is, what happens when the two of these are the same? What does that mean? They're the same, alright? So, we don't have to go near them. What, what's this one missing? The B. What's, what's this denominator missing? <coughs> when compared to the other one. This one has a B, but this one doesn't. So that's a B there. This one has an A, but this one doesn't. So that's an A. Happy with that? Now what do I have to add on top? A. A. And what do I have to add up here? B. B. What's the top become? A squared minus B squared. B squared. Now, when it comes to multiplying, if I was asked to multiply 2 by 5 by 3, the answer is 30. We all know the answer is 30, don't we? But I'm all, I can always multiply the, the, the first and the last one first and then multiply it by the middle one later on. It doesn't matter what order you do multiplication in. So therefore, I'm going to multiply A by B and get AB and then it's going to be AB into A plus B. Does that make sense? Any questions on that one? There, there should be. Anything? Press stop. Okay. Grand. Okay guys, which one's left then? Did I do... Which one did I not do? The last day? The last two, was it? Yeah. So both of them. Okay guys. So... That makes sense. Okay guys, so in the last one, okay? 1 divided by x minus 1. What's the what's this x minus 1 over? Can anybody tell me? 12 over 1. If it doesn't have a denominator, it's 1. Now, do you remember that little trick I showed you the other day? Actually, it won't work here, so never mind. Okay, guys, look at all three of them, okay? What's the common denominator? Now, if you aren't sure, hands up if you're completely lost in this question right now, be honest. All right, yeah, one, two, three. All right, Dennis is lost, okay? It's bad. Now, uh, guys, if I had this in a test, if I had something like that in a test, yeah? What I do to find the common denominator is I'd write it like this. It'd be one divided by two multiplied by three multiplied by seven. Do you see that? And see the way it used to only have a 2 underneath? Now I have to put a 3 and 7 on the top. That's for the first one, do you see that? You multiply this number, see the way it, it, it has the denominator of 2. You multiply the other two denominators by that one there. The middle one, what does the middle 3 get? get uh, take, I know it's 1, right? So, but uh, what does the 3 get multiplied by? The 2 and the 7, yeah? And what? finally, what does the uh, 4 get multiplied by? The 2 and the 3. So let's use a similar system here, okay? So the bottom line is, all your denominators are going to have all three brackets underneath, okay? So technically speaking, it's going to look something like this, okay? There's going to be this one here, there's going to be this one here, and there's going to be the number one. But do we really have to put in the number one? No. Okay. Now, just to keep it the same, right? This one, what does that one get multiplied by? It gets multiplied by the one, and what else does it get multiplied by? The one minus x. What does the plus x minus one get multiplied by? It gets, x minus 1 gets multiplied by x minus 1, and it also gets multiplied by, minus x. sorry, 1 minus x, oh yeah, 1 minus x, now guys, having done that already, what do you think about that, it's pretty, pretty substantial isn't it, it's, it's very big, now we can do it this way, but and then finally the last one will be 1 getting multiplied by x minus 1 and 1 minus x. It's very large. We actually missed the trick. I'm going to show you the trick we missed. We could do it out that way. It could take a bit of time. You could multiply it all out. Do you understand? 
then factorize it. But look, here's what we missed out on. Okay, I was actually right in the first thing I said. See this here? What happens if I multiply the top and bottom by minus 1? What happens? Minus 1 turns into? And the bottom turns into? Minus 1 plus x, and then you're going to be left with 1 over x minus 1. Now all of a sudden this question looks like this. 1 over x minus 1 plus x minus 1 all over 1. Mine plus 1 over. Now all of a sudden they're the same denominator, aren't they? Okay. Now it's the middle one that we need to change. What do we need to do with the middle one? Can everybody tell me? We need to put another x minus 1 on the bottom, which means that we should have an x, a, a second x minus 1 on the top. Okay plus 1 over x minus 1. Now realize what's the next step then after that? Can we tell me? No? Multiply it out. Multiply the red part out. What's 1 plus 1? 2. There's 2 at the end and then we multiply this out. So we're going to get a x, x squared minus 1x minus 1x plus 1, and then we're going to have plus 2, isn't it? All divided by x minus 1. Now look what happens here, we're going to get x squared minus 2x plus 3 all over x minus 1. Would you think that's the full answer? Would you think that's the full answer? Why not? Oh, and you're shaking your head, why is that not the full answer? We can factorize the top. What can you factorize the top into? Reference number of 3. Uh, actually, maybe we can't. No, we can't actually We can't actually factorize that because it's not a minus 3. If it was a minus 3, I could have done minus 3 and plus 1, but it's a plus 3, so I think that's the answer in the back of the book, is it? Uh, yeah, that should be the answer in the back of the book, all right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, lads, last one. Well, for the time being. Anybody tell me, take these two questions on their own. Treat the top part as its own question. Treat the bottom part as a completely separate question. In maths, in Leibniz Honours Maths, you got to treat them as two simpler questions and then at the very end, divide one answer by the other. So Lou, can you tell me anything to do with the first one? 1 plus 2 over x minus 3 over x squared. Can you tell me what to do with this one? Uh, put an x onto, an x onto the 1 and 2. Very close. Maybe put an x squared underneath the first one. And then x squared on top. And then what about the middle one? Uh, and now all of a sudden we have the same denominator, don't we? Finish it off for me, Luke. Um, well, you can finish this off for me. How do you finish that off for me? Yeah, what's the reference? Uh, what's the two numbers that multiply to give you minus 3 uh, on board? Uh, two numbers to multiply to give you minus 3. Uh, minus 3. Yeah. Just two numbers that multiply to give you minus 3. There's only uh, one choice. 3 and uh, 1 as well. 3 and 1. Yeah. And it's going to be plus 3 minus 1. So this whole answer is going to be x plus 3 and x minus 1 all over x squared. Is that all right? Yes? Do not cancel the x squared. Uh, no. I'm gonna, can anyone explain why we're not allowed to cancel the x squared? That would be really good. Conrad? Uh, because when you're adding, you know what I do, it's only when you multiply. Yeah, so you're adding this x squared. It's not being multiplied for everything. So Luke, if I made it look like this, 
if I look something like this, x squared multiplied by 2x minus 3 divided by x squared. Do you see the way this x squared is getting multiplied by both of them? That means I can cross off the x squareds. However, if it's x squared plus 2x minus 3, you can actually see that the x squared isn't in, in every term. It's not being multiplied, it's been added. Therefore, I can cross them out. If you ever want to check that in a test, all you could do is you could, you could replicate the question, okay? So, what I mean by replicate is, imagine you have a number here, call it 5 and that one 5. If you had 5 and you had a 5 here, and that was like 2, and that's 3, yeah? The answer to that question is 10 over 5, which is 2. If you cancel the two 5s, your answer is then 5, which means you've done something wrong. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so guys, we've now done the blue part, and now we're going to do the, uh, the green part. What's the green part, guys? Same, same trick. So, uh, Greg, what do you do with this part here? 1 plus 3 over x minus 4 over x squared. What do you do? Uh, do you multiply the other side? <coughs> so add an x to the 3. Add an x to the top and an x to the bottom. Yeah. And what about the 1? Uh, x, x squared on the bottom? Yeah. And? X, x squared on the top. Because um, it has to still turn into 1. We haven't changed the question, have we? What's x squared divided by x squared? 1. What's 3x divided by x squared? 3 over x. We haven't changed the question at all. So it's all over x squared. And uh, what's uh, this here then? We're, we need to factorize x squared plus 3x minus 4. What's the reference number? Reference number anyway? Minus 4. And then break it up into what two numbers? 4 and? Minus 1. So, 4 minus 1, so it's going to be x plus 4, x minus 1, okay? Now what now? Now, we got to take, we got to use both answers. Will somebody write down these two answers because I have to take it off the board now in a second. So, does anybody already have them? No, so we just take them down quickly, so I'm going to take them off the board and then use them to complete the question. So x plus 3, x minus 1, x plus 4, x minus 1. Okay, I think I have it. The answer to the first one, divided by the answer to the second one. Now guys, what do we do when we have a fraction divided by a fraction? Now everybody tell me. Bring the bottom fraction up and turn it upside down. So we're going to have x minus 3, x minus 1, all over x squared. And then we're going to have x squared divided by x plus 4, x minus 1. Now Luke, what can I cancel here? Um, yes. Which one? So, um, okay, uh, anybody? Oh. Uh, x minus 1 is being multiplied. So, x squared is being multiplied by x plus 4 is being multiplied by x minus 1. x plus 3 is getting multiplied by x minus 1 is getting multiplied by x squared. Every single thing on the top and the bottom is being multiplied. So, they're all able to be crossed off. So example would be x minus 1 and x minus 1 can cancel because they're the, exactly the same number within their brackets. Technically speaking, the x squared is in a bracket and it's the same number within the brackets. Now, x minus 3 and x minus 4 are not the same number within the brackets. That means they cannot be striked off. You cannot just strike off the two x's. Do you got that? So that's your answer. Okay, that's the answer there. Any questions on that one? Yes? Is that x plus 3? It is an x plus 3. Good man. Okay, it's an x plus 3. Okay, guys. Huh? Plus 4 as well. The plus 4? Ah, oh, I don't know why I did that. Okay, guys, moving on. Now. 
This one here. Uh, which ones do you need me to do here? Which ones did I do yesterday? Now we tell me which one I did yesterday. Two. I did part two and I did part one. Just one and two? Yeah. So I have three, four, five now, is it? Okay. So three, four, five. Just make it a bit bigger, more workspace for me. Now, can anybody recognize the similarity between 1 minus x and x minus 1? Anybody recognize the similarity? What happens if I multiply the second one by minus 1 top and bottom? So what happens if I multiply this one here by minus 1 on top and minus 1 on the bottom? What happens? Minus x and then minus x plus 1 same thing as minus x over 1 minus x. Does everybody understand that? Like, when I, when I have any number, any number I want, for example, two cents, if I multiply the top and bottom by minus 1, what happens is I'm going to get minus 2 over minus 7. What is minus 2 over minus 7? Still 2 over 7. So by multiplying a fraction like this by minus one top and bottom, you're not changing its value, you're just giving it a makeover to look more like the other one. So all of a sudden, what we know that the denominator is the same, so what do we have on top? One minus x. And what's one minus x divided by one minus x? One. Who got that one out? Okay, that's, that's better, that's good. But well, that's not easy. Okay. Ready? Go again? Okay guys, now uh, Next one is a difficult one Does anybody remember what x to the power minus p means? Anybody remember that from junior cert? Okay, I'll see if we can rejog your memory 5 squared is 25 5 to the power of minus 2 is 1 over 25. 5 to the power of minus 2 equals 1 over 5 squared. Anybody remember that? What about x to the power of minus 10? What's the answer to that then? 1 over x to the 10. Therefore, what would x to the minus p be? What's 1 over x to the p equal to? 1 over x, p. You happy with that? Okay, now that we've done that, we're going to have this 3 over 1 plus x, p, x squared p, plus 3 over 1 plus, now what does this change into? Sorry? 1 over x, p. Now guys, does this have a common denominator at the moment? Uh, I'm talking specifically about this section here. Does it have a common denominator? How do we give it a common denominator? XP over XP. What's XP divided by XP? 1. So we can just change that to XP over XP. XP all over XP. Okay, now that that's done, okay? What can we say about, uh, what can we do here? We now have three divided by a fraction. What do you do when you're dividing by a fraction again? Can anybody tell me? What happens when you divide by a fraction? You turn it upside down, don't you? And what happens if you turn this upside down? 3 times xp all over xp plus 1. And now what happens? And we know. I put it in here. So that's 3 over 1 plus xp plus. Uh, did I turn that upside down? Okay. I didn't do it. 3xp. What's this, guys? 1 plus xp, isn't it? Now, guys, are the denominators now the same? The denominators are now the same, aren't they? 
So we're going to get 3 plus 3 XP all over 1 plus XP. What can you do at the top? Can anybody tell me? What can you factorize out of it? 3. 3 into 1 plus XP divided by 1 plus XP. And what happens? And what do we get? 3. Okay. We're going to have to do that again, right? Yeah. Alright guys. Last one. Hopefully I'll get it done. Now, this one here. What can you do to the bottom one? What, what can you do to all three denominators? Can anybody tell me? What can you do to the three denominators? Can you factorize them? Yes, you can factorize them. How do you factorize this point here? And what are you left with? Uh, x plus 2. X and x plus 2. What about that one? Uh, x again. Yeah. Okay. What about this one here? And what's the reference number? Six. And then what are the two numbers that makes that work? Uh, one and six. Mm -hmm. No, because uh, you'd have to make it uh, minus one plus six. Two and three. Now, let's do a comparison. All the denominators are checking each other out, and they're jealous of what part they don't have, and they get a part for themselves. So, for an example, this one here. <coughs> He checks out the middle denominator and what, what part does he not have? He have an x, but it hasn't got an x plus 3. So it, it goes and gets itself an x plus 3 top and bottom. What about this one here, the middle one? It wants an x plus 2 because it hasn't got an x plus 2. So it gets itself an x plus 2 top and bottom. And finally, what about the last one? It hasn't got an X, so it gets itself an X top and bottom. Now, this full question now only has one denominator, doesn't it? It's this denominator here. Now, what can we do with the top? X by X, X by minus 2, minus 2X, 3 by X, 3X, 3 by minus 2, minus 6, plus 3X plus 6. And then we're going to have minus x squared minus 4x. Now guys, what cancels here? Anything cancel? X squared. X squared cancel. What else cancels? Minus 6 and plus 6. What am I left with? Minus 2x plus 3x is... That's 1x. 1x plus 3x. 4x minus 4x. The whole answer is 0 divided by this number here. And what's 0 divided by any number? What's 0 divided by any number, guys? 0. Full answer here is 0. Okay, guys.